It's 6.35. Um, all right, so let's, um, let's begin. Uh, my name is Kyle Kreider. I am a professor of political science at Wilkes. So I'll be talking to you tonight about political science. I can also talk to you a little bit about the International Relations Program. Um, I am also the university's pre-law advisor. So I'm more than happy to talk about law school, the pre-law program, if you're interested in that. Again, the Google form that I have up there that I'm asking you to fill out, kind of ask some, you know, it's just basically three or four questions. And one of the questions in there is, um, are you interested in the pre-law program? I can send you more information about events that are coming up. Um, and I also ask, the, I think the last question that I ask is if you're interested in a virtual, um, uh, like a, a sit-in or a visit in, in a virtual class. Uh, we can't do, unfortunately, uh, in-person visits in, in class um, just because of the size of the classes and, and the number of students that can, that can be in a class at any particular time. But, you know, there are many classes going on um, where, you know, um, you, you can join, you know, virtually. So if you're interested in that, please, please let me know and I'll make that happen. Um, before we begin, I have, a, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I'll walk you through. I'll share my screen. And as we go through the program, um, you know, you can stop me at any point. You can ask questions. You can ask questions at the end uh, or, you know, during, you know, during the, the presentation. So I want to make this as laid back as possible, you know, so a friendly sort of exchange. Any questions you have, I'll try to answer them. Um, before we before I do that, though, I, I wanted to kind of go around the, the Zoom room here. Um, if you could just, I, I see your name, but if you could give me your name and tell me a little bit about yourself, that would be great. So like what high school um, you go to, what year you're in. Um, so I see Connor, you're first on my list. Do you want to go first and tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so my name's Connor Fry. I'm from Shenango Valley High School in upstate New York. Um, <clears throat> I'm a senior. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I figured that would be the answer, but I just, you know, I mean, we get certainly juniors as we're into the, the new year, right? There's some overlap, but okay. So senior and you're up from, what, what's the town? Um, Binghamton, New York. Oh, you are in Binghamton. Okay. Yeah. Um, we, we have a lot of students from Binghamton, so that's good. Oh, yeah. Some of my friends are, are going. So, okay. I don't know. Can't so, really Connor, do you, um, do you, like, so what do you, what do you do in high school? Do you play any sports, clubs, interests? Uh, yeah, I, um, I run cross country, indoor track, and I play tennis. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. No, that's great. I'm a runner as well. We, awesome. I'm, a, I'm a, the faculty advisor to the cross country team. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. So that now that sort of not position, but that sort of role started right before the pandemic hit. So I've yet uh, to meet the cross country team, but I have <laughs> worked with them a little bit and kind of, you know, have done some help with recruiting and that sort of thing. So, all right. Thank you, Connor. Nice to meet you. Yep. Thank you. How about you, Morgan? My name is Morgan Steiner. I'm a senior at North Pocono High School in Moscow, PA. I'm only about 45 minutes away from Wilkes. Um, I play soccer and I do theater and student council and a reading contest for my school. You say a reading contest? Yeah, we get a list of 45 books every year and we are like given the option to read them. And then at the end of the year, we do like 17 questions in three rounds. Um, we didn't have it last year, and we're not. They haven't told us anything about it this year, though. But before that, we've always gotten first place. Oh wow, that's great. No, so when you um, when you attend college, do you think you'll play soccer or? I'm not the best. I'd like to do some semblance of keep doing a sport. I know I saw books as like a swimming thing, and I do like to swim. So maybe that, or maybe soccer. I don't know. Cool. All right, that's great. Yeah, I have, um, uh, you know, uh, there's a there's an English professor at Wilkes who lives in North Pocono, so I've been up there, and that's great. 
So thank you, Morgan. Uh, Samantha? Hi, I'm Samantha Howie. I'm from Honestale High School and I'm a senior. And Honestale is like an hour maybe away from Wilkes. I am involved with Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science. I am a chair of the National Honor Society Blood Drive Committee. I'm involved in student council, um, science Olympiad, and a whole bunch of other clubs and activities. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I see your picture there where you're you're actually at Wilkes, right? Yes. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, I've, I've been to Honesdale. That's great. Great to have you. Thank you, Samantha. And then, um, so JL Harris one, we're just going around the Zoom room before I start my presentation. I am just asking for a name and tell me something about yourself, what high school, some of the interests you have. Any takers on that? All right, that's fine. Well, we can come back and do that if you like. Any questions for me before we... Um, oh, okay, wait, so it's Google Form again. All right, let me see. Oh, that's right, I, I probably put it in there. Let me see before, let me see. All right, so I'll send that. That in there. I always forget that when you put stuff in the chat, there it is. So everyone who's in the room now should see it. I always forget that if you're not in the Zoom um, yet, you won't you won't see the previous um, chat. So the, all right, there it is. So I'm just asking everyone to fill that out. Just asking for some basic information. So any other questions before I begin my presentation of sort here. All right, so let's- um, I do have a quick question, I'm sorry, but I can't wait until after. Um, so I'm involved with my school's AP Capstone program, and right now I'm doing an original primary research project. And I was wondering if that would fill the political science capstone requirement that you have, um, even though it's not directly about political science. Yeah, so it would not fit the capstone, the political science capstone experience. So what that is, there's nothing that a person could take in high school that would count for that class. Now that um, there's a possibility that that capstone experience or capstone class you're talking about could count as something else, but that political science capstone. So every student at Wilkes, regardless of major, um, needs to do a capstone. So if you are an education major, the capstone experience would be student teaching, right? Um, the political science capstone is a basically, uh, it's, it's a three semester um, sort of process and it culminates in the final semester where the student writes a paper um, of interest to him or her, right? So something that they like something that they have picked up in a class that's really interests them. So they work with a professor, they work with other students in a class. It's kind of a collaborative process, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so there's nothing, there's no high school class that would count as the, you know, political science capstone project. So that's kind of how that works. But that's, you know, that's a great question. And it, I'm not saying that that AP capstone experience you refer to won't count as something, it just won't count as that. Does that thank make you. sense, Morgan? Yes, thank you. Yep, sure. Great question. All right, so let me um, share my screen. So, so here's the, you know, the quote unquote official sort of presentation. I just kind of want to walk you through um, what we're about at Wilkes and, and what political science and pre-law and international relations is all about. And again, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to stop me, you know, put a shout out uh, and, and I'll uh, try to answer it. So um, what I wanted to do, we did some of these already. We did, you know, student introductions. Thank you for that. You kind of told me about yourself. That's great. Um, the next slide I'll show you um, 
who's in the political science department. I'll explain a little bit about what we do. Um, so I will talk about, I'll give you my contact information. I'll talk about Wilkes. I can talk about political science and pre-law. And then I'll explain the program curricula in terms of like what, what courses students would have to take, what, what courses students could elect to take as a political science major. Uh, and then I'll spend some time showing you some things that we have done, um, some of the, the unique things that we've done as a, uh, as a major and as a group of uh, inter, you know, political science interested students. And then lastly, I'll, I'll talk about some careers in political science and what many of our graduates uh, have done after graduation. All right, so you've introduced yourself to me. Um, I'll introduce myself to you and then I'll um, tell you about the other three members of the department. So I, I am the first one there, Kyle Kreider. I am a professor of political science. Um, in parentheses, I've put the courses or the area of political science that each of us is responsible for. So I am the pre-law coordinator. Uh, so anything law related, I teach. So I, I teach the constitutional law classes. I teach criminal law, law and society. And then I'm also responsible for teaching every student. This is a required class. You'll see it in a minute. There's a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's an introduction to political thinking and, and I teach that course as well. Uh, Dr. Ben Toll does the American government, uh, American institutions, or if, if you are interested in Congress or the presidency or bureaucracy or public policy, Dr. Toll teaches those courses. He's a great guy. He's from um, Indiana, uh, but he, yeah, he's a great, great guy. He's in his second year. Dr. Miller does comparative politics. In other words, the other countries of the world. Right, so he is a Latin American specialist. So he teaches a lot of the courses uh, dealing with South America, Latin America generally. Uh, I'll, I'll show you some pictures of Dr. Miller and some of the trips that he's taken and, and some of the things that he's uh, most known for in the department. And then last but not least is Dr. Andrea Mayeran. She is from Romania. And so she also does international relations. She's also the study abroad coordinator. So if you any if you do study abroad, you would be working more closely with her in that role. So she teaches international relations. She also teaches some public policy. Uh, and she, because she's from Europe and she studies Europe, she also teaches the European politics classes. All right. So that's our department. And you all of you have introduced yourself to me. So that's great. Thank you. So here's a picture if you're, you know, want to know like what we look like and that sort of thing, you know what I look like because I have my camera on. But um, so here, if you can see my cursor there, this is Dr. Miller right here in the front. Um, this is Dr. Myron right here, also in the front. Um, and then back here, this is Dr. Baldino. Now, Dr. Baldino retired um, two years ago and uh, Dr. Ben Toll replaced him. All right, so that's, that's who that is. And then of course, uh, there's, if you can spot me, there's me in the back. And then, so this is from uh, three years ago. This was um, after, right after graduation in May of 2007 or 2018, I believe. So these are some of the graduates from that year. All right, so it's that. Now, so this is, uh, again, this is me. Um, you know, if we were to meet in person, we would be in, in Bryceth Hall, that's where uh, as a political science major, most of most, not all, but most of your classes would be held. It's kind of a big building, kind of a main building on campus. So my office is uh, Bryce's 327 room D. There is my email address, right? So if you want to contact me, it's just my first name dot last name at wilkes.edu. So I put that in here for many reasons, but one, you know, if tomorrow morning you wake up or a week from now you you think of a question uh, and you wish you would have asked it but you didn't, you know, feel free to email me, I'm more than happy to, uh, to, to respond to you and answer any questions you have. I can call you on the phone, you know, whatever you like. Um, the guy back there who's going like this, that's Dr. Gar. He teaches sociology uh, on campus. All right, so that, uh, that's my contact information. So what is political science? So this is, um, you know, this is one of those things that is often misidentified. It's um, sometimes people don't know what it is. Basically, it's the study of how and why decisions about public policies are made. Um, 
So generally speaking, political scientists use social science research methods to explain and predict how institutions and public policies are fashioned and the effects of those institutions and policies. So, so you know, the, the abridged version, I would say that political science is the scientific study of politics. So many people think, oh, political science, it's a current events. It's not current events, right? So it's the scientific study of politics, just like you know, you would if you're a biology major or a chemistry major and you're using the scientific method, political science using the scientific method, there's a methodology, there's a you know, research methodology, that's what we do, all right? And that's what political science is. So, you know, of course, the courses in high school most closely associated with political science would be American government, civics, uh, world governments, that sort of thing. All right, so so why Wilkes? You know, so I know you're probably looking at other institutions. I can, you know, I, I can talk to you about Wilkes. I can also talk to you about my experiences. Um, clearly, it's been a while since I've been in high school, but um, just to, to so to tell you what I'm talking about when I talk about Wilkes and when I talk about political science at Wilkes. You know, I went to a small high school and then I went to a, uh, a Pennsylvania state school where the student body was approximately 7,000. I went for graduate work uh, and, you know, at that place, uh, you know, Temple University at the time, there were probably 23,000 students. And then I got employed at Wilkes and we have about 2,500 um, undergrads, you know, give or take, you know, 100 or two, whatever, depending on the year. So, you know, I've been, you know, I know about small institutions like Wilkes and the advantages that we have at Wilkes. I, I'm familiar with middle sort of range schools like my undergraduate. And I'm also familiar with sort of large research institutions. Uh, and so I can explain and talk about, if you like, the advantages and disadvantages of each, All right? So, you know, I think um, one of the things that is, um, you know, unique or somewhat unique about Wilkes is that, and this is one of the things we pride ourselves in, is that we have a lot of the programs and activities and opportunities that you would get at a larger university uh, in a much more intimate, caring, and mentoring environment at a small college, right? So when I was, when I went to college, um, most of my college classes were in the range of you know, I don't know, around 40, I would say. Some of the introductory classes that I took as an undergrad, you know, I had, there were probably 120, 100 to 120 in those classes. Um, that's not what you would get at Wilkes. So at Wilkes, the classes are gonna be much smaller. I think no class would be larger than 40. Um, so in political science, as you move up, as you go from first year to second year to third year to fourth year, um, the, the class sizes get smaller and smaller. So I've had classes, you know, 10 students. I've had classes as small as seven or eight. You know, so most of my classes are kind of in the 15 to 25 range. Um, and, and so, you know, some students want bigger classes. They want to, you know, they, they want to get lost. Maybe they want to get, you know, they want to be more of a number, which is fine. Some people, right, like that sort of more intimate mentoring environment like Wilkes. So it's just based on what you would, what you like. Um, so in a study, this is a recent study uh, by the Brookings Institute uh, institution, Wilkes was ranked 14th in the nation among all colleges and universities for helping students to improve their economic standing and income after graduation, right? So they kind of looked at this, this is a kind of a famous Brookings Institution study that kind of looked at socioeconomic status going into college and where uh, where the students went after college, right? So this is something that we pride ourselves in in, in helping students uh, kind of develop as a person and as students. So this is the big one, all right? So this is something you, you need to think about as you're shopping for colleges and what you want. Um, what you're going to get at Wilkes is you're going to get small classes and you're going to get the advantages that come from small classes. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, I mean many things by that. We can talk about it if you like. But one of the things is 
our students, our majors, and by the way, we have approximately, it depends on the year, but usually between 40 and 50 majors, political science majors, so around 10 per class. And all of the professors know all of the political science students, and we know them very well. Why do we know them well? Because they take all of our classes, right? So, you know, there, I'll show you here in a second, the courses that you're required to take. I've had, you know, ma many of the, these are required classes. So every political science student is required to take the classes. So the students that I have in my classes, I've seen one, two, three times before. Um, so we are, we, we are also in Bryce of Hall, which is a, as I said, a sort of a popular building on campus. It's a high traffic area. We see our students, um, you know, if not on a daily basis, certainly a weekly basis, and, and it's easy, much more easier to keep tabs on the students. Uh, and so we know our students very, very well. Um, students come to our offices, especially I would say me because I'm pre-law advisor. So students come to me and, you know, all four years, I'm working with those students to kind of get them acclimated to college and ready to apply to law school and succeed in law school. So that's my job. Other professors work with students in other capacities, um, getting employment, going to graduate school, whatever it might be. All right. So why, why political science? So one of the things, um, if you look at the literature, the studies that look at what employers are looking for, right? So if you want to go into a job after, immediately after college, um, a lot of these studies of employers and asking them what they want, um, they, they say, look, we can train our employees how to do X, Y, or Z. What we can't really train them to do and what we need colleges to do is to train them in basic skills, critical thinking skills, analytical thinking skills, reading, writing, some of the uh, what, what are called transferable skills, meaning it doesn't matter what job you have, if you have those skills, uh, it's extremely valuable. So 75, this is a recent study, 75% of employers want schools to place more emphasis on the social sciences like political science. The reason why is because of the skills that come from a political science degree are very trans, uh, transferable. Uh, political science is one of the top seven majors that can put you in the top 1% of wage earners in the US. That's from the US News and World Report. Um, I can talk about this you know, in the question and answer session if you would like, um, but there are, there's a multitude of internship opportunities in Wilkes-Barre and in the Northeastern Pennsylvania region. I work with students in law school placement. So I've been at Wilkes since 2004. And in those you know, 16 or 17 years, I keep track of the students that have applied and have gotten into law school. Students have been accepted to over 60 law schools uh, in the past decade, all right? So we have a, an excellent track record in law school placement if you're interested in law school. Now, so this is, um, this is probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense to you, uh, but I'll, I'll try to explain it. We can talk about this in more detail if you like, but this is, um, so that, let me just double check. Yeah, okay. So I have two slides here. Basically what this is, is that, and by the way, you know, whether you choose Wilkes or some other school, it's going to be, you're going to see something like this, okay? And what I mean, what I mean is, if you come to Wilkes, every student is required to take what's called general education requirements. So these are the skills, these are the requirements to make students well-rounded uh, in exposure to different disciplines and a well-rounded person, all right? So every student is required to take this, you know, what's called first year foundations. Um, you know, so you're required to take some English classes, a history class, philosophy, blah, 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 right? So you have to take two courses in the sciences. That's what this is, okay? So that this is what's called general education requirements. There are 43 credits here. Now, in terms of political science, let me just, let me just spend a minute or two talking about what this is and what we are trying to accomplish with our program, all right? So every student, every political science student at Wilkes is required to take American government. They're required to take international relations, comparative politics, political thinking, 
Uh, they're required to take what are called the research methods classes, a career class, and then um, what's for some reason missing from this is uh, the capstone, right? So the capstone should be here. Now, what, what is this? What this is, is this, this is basically the core, right? So it's one class in each of the areas of political science. So one class in American government, one class in IR, one class in comparative, one, you know, so that's what this is. Now, above that, political science majors are required to take seven classes, 21 credits in electives. This is where students get to pick which area or areas of political science they are most interested in, all right? So if you're interested in law school, you wanna be a lawyer, your major electives, or most of them at least, would be taken with me, all right? Constitutional law, criminal law, law and society, things like that. If you're interested in the Peace Corps, if you're interested in international relations or comparative politics, you would be taking most of your electives with Dr. Miller or Dr. Meyer on. If you're interested in American government, you would be taking your electives, most of them, with Dr. Toll. Okay, does that make sense? That's just kind of how this works in terms of specialization, if you will. All right, now, so this is pretty much the same thing or very similar to what you would get at pretty much any institution, but it's just how Wilkes structures it. All right, so some of the things I just wanna talk about what we've done. Um, so on the right here um, with the, the students here with Dr. Baldino, there, there is a, um, a, a club. Um, no, I'm sorry, this is not, I, wish, I shouldn't call it a club. This is a, an honor society. So if you are, if you excel in academics and you have a very high GPA, uh, probably in your junior year, you would be inducted into the Political Science Honor Society. So that's, a, that's what that picture is there on the right. On the left, um, you know, unfortunately this women, woman in the front has died. That's, that's uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Given our proximity, relative proximity to Washington DC and New York and Harrisburg and Philadelphia, you know, we've been able to take trips um, the university funds these trips. This is an example of a trip in 2012 that we took to the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, there was a Wilkes-Barre attorney there on the left in the front who was friends with Justice Ginsburg and got us in to visit in her chambers, right? So, you know, Wilkes, so you say like, well, oh, Wilkes-Barre, like where is Wilkes-Barre? Or, you know, it's a small city or whatever. But given our proximity, you know, we can take, um, you know, a, a two-day trip to Washington DC. We can take a day trip to New York City. So that, that's, um, that, that's an advantage to our geographical location. And we do that quite frequently. All right, so some of the other things we've done is that, so we are very active in a lot of talks and debates and lectures. And I just wanna show you some slides about some of the things we've done. So each spring is I put on a law day um, this is for students, high school students, college students who are interested in legal careers. So we've done Law Day. Um, the, the Political Science Honor Society gives us money to bring in speakers. So the, the immigration policy speech there um, is an example. Here are some other examples of various uh, lectures that have been given. So we are a very active, we are a very busy department in terms of providing talks and lectures and debates for our students, right? So the, the dirty little secret is that the vast majority, if not all of these talks, debates, and lectures uh, are also extra credit opportunities, but it gives students exposure, right? It gives students um, exposure to different careers. It gives students exposures uh, to different aspects of political science. And so it's, it's a one way to network um, and, and so I can, I can tell you from personal experience, I was talking about this with Dr. Miller the other, the other week, that when I was an undergrad back in the 1990s, I did not have these experiences. I did not have these opportunities of all these different speakers and events and trips that I think we provide at Wilkes University. So we're, we're very active and we're, uh, you know, we're, we're quite active in, in putting on these programs. Um, Next one, let me see. All right, so 
uh, you might have questions about this. I just wanted to briefly talk about it. If you're interested in law school, one of the things that Wilkes has is what's called a three plus three program. Now, we have two of these. One is with Drexel School of Law in Philadelphia. The other is with Penn State School of Law in University Park, all right? Now, what is a three plus three program? College can be expensive. Law school is very expensive. Law school is three years, undergraduate, traditional bachelor arts, four years. The three plus three is, as long as you meet certain criteria, GPA, LSAT, which is the test you need to take to get into law school, you can start law school in your fourth year rather than spending four years at Wilkes and then in your fifth year, right? And the next year going on to law school. What this does is it cuts out a year. It cuts out essentially your senior year at Wilkes. The first year of law school, those credits of course count toward your law degree, but those credits also count toward your political science degree, all right? So <clears throat> these three plus three programs, at least at Wilkes, they work, uh, they work well with political science, they don't work as well with other majors. Uh, so this is something that, that we have. So we have a three plus three with Drexel. We also have a three plus one. If you don't wanna to go to law school, you just want a master of legal studies. We have that three, three plus one as well. And then the other one, and, I, and again, I can, on the Google form, if you indicate that you uh, want more information, I can send you more information on what these three plus three programs are. Um, the other one, as I mentioned, was the three plus three with Penn State Law School. All right, so we have a student now. So these are relatively new programs. Penn State was first, Drexel was just created last year. Uh, we have a student who graduated Wilkes two years ago, or actually he didn't graduate, but he finished his junior year two years ago, went on to Penn State Law, got a full ride, and he's in his second year of Penn State Law today. All right. We also have what's called, if you're, in, if you're interested more in the world, um, we have an, a United Nations lecture series. So what this is, is um, diplomats who are working in New York, who are working in the United Nations on poverty, on you know, labor rights, on reproductive rights, whatever it is. Um, we, we get about three speakers a semester. You can see that these are usually very well attended. Um, and, and so this is a nice way to, to network and, and to get a feel for how careers in international service might, might look, right? So we have the United Nations lecture series. We also, as a part of the United Nations lecture series, um, part of that contract is trips to the United Nations. So every spring, uh, Dr. Miller or Dr. Myron or both take students to the United Nations where they meet with diplomats. Uh, they meet with people to talk about international careers. So that's part of that um, program. We also have a class on the model UN. You may have something like this in high school, I'm not sure, um, but there's a college version of model UN and that's every spring semester. So Dr. Miller teaches that class and takes uh, up to 10 students to the, uh, to the model UN. <clears throat> Also some study abroad opportunities. Doctor, as I said, Dr. Myron, who is a political science professor, is the study abroad coordinator. So we have those opportunities. For international relations, uh, it used to be called international studies. That's what this is. Um, we, we have a newsletter that's published at least twice a year. So if you are interested in that, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I could send you one of those, but we do have a newsletter that's published at least twice a year. Student clubs are very popular. So we have, there's a club for pre-law, it's called the Pre-Law Society. There is the UNICEF club, that's the one there on the left. We have a political affairs club, that's the one in the middle on the right. Uh, that's the more sort of um, American government type of club. So there are at least three, UNICEF, political affairs and pre-law society. So our students are very active in those clubs. They do various things, they do fundraising. Um, this is one of the things, this is gonna sound weird maybe, but 
post pandemic, this is one of the things that I'm most looking forward to getting back to is, is kind of these more intimate, you know, co connect, uh, collections of students uh, outside of class, extracurricular activities. They were always very fun. Um, so just looking at these pictures make me nostalgic for what, what, what we did in those clubs. Some you know, successful recent graduates, these, I'm gonna show you some, I think three slides here, just batches. These are in like 2008, 2009, some, uh, some uh, graduates who are working in Manhattan. These two individuals here graduated in 2015. Um, Kayla Rooney on the left is uh, working at a, a big law firm in New York and Aaron Hohaw is working at a big law firm in Philadelphia. Uh, some of the more recent graduates, Beth Gilbert is from Wilkesbury, and she's now on Wilkesbury City Council. Courtney Moyer, as you see here in this picture, she interned at the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, got a job in state government. So there are just some pictures of some of our recent graduates. And then the last slide is, you know, what some is something that a lot of uh, prospective students want to talk about, and that is, if you're looking at careers, where do Wilkes graduates go? So generally speaking, um, he, here's where our graduates go. So some, very few, but some go into graduate school. If you wanted to do that, some get their master's degrees. Many go to law school. Those are the ones that I work with. Um, we have students who have gone directly into jobs at the federal level. We've had other students go into state jobs, you know, the um, in Harrisburg, primarily, most of our students are, are, are from Pennsylvania. They work in Harrisburg. Some work in local government. Um, we've had a handful of students go into interest group work in Washington, D.C. They work for, you know, uh, an interest group of whatever different persuasion. Uh, campaigns management is a possibility. And then last but not least, teaching. So if you wanted to, you could uh, you know, get certified to teach social studies 7 to 12. That used to be popular, um, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago, that used to be a very popular career. It's less popular now, but, but we have students um, who do that as well. All right, so that is the, that finishes the sort of formal presentation. I am more than happy to, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. These are we have a Facebook page, Wilkes University Political Science Pre-Law and International Studies. I think we changed that to International Relations. Um, you can like us there. I also have a, 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 a Twitter page for the Pre-Law Society, Wilkes Pre-Law. So like those or follow us if you like, all right? So questions, concerns, um, you know, we'll do a question and answer here if you have any questions. I am more than happy to meet with you over the phone. I talk with students on the phone, all, prospective students on the phone all the time. I can do that. We can meet virtually over Zoom or Google Meet, um, or you can shoot me an email, right? You have my email address as well. So uh, questions, anything I can help you with about Wilkes or about political science or anything that's on your mind? There has to be at least one question. Something to start discussion here. What can I help you with? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, for internships, do you have any examples of ones that kids normally try for? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, so I work, so let me tackle this a couple of different ways. So legal internships, there are numerous law offices in Wilkes-Barre and the surrounding communities. They take a lot of interns. We, I don't, so Morgan, you're from North Pocono. Not sure how familiar you are with Wilkesbury, but down the street from Wilkes is the county courthouse. In the county courthouse are judges, uh, the Court of Common Pleas judges. There are 
uh, there is the public defender's office, there's the public or um, the prosecutor, the DA's office. We've had students intern in all three of those locations, right? So the, the, the judges, they love, and I, and I know I'm tooting our own horn here, but this is the, the truth. They love Wilkes students. Now, one of the judges is the neighbor across the street from Dr. Miller. So there's a, there's a, a close connection there, but she's always asking Dr. Miller, please send us more Wilkes interns, right? So we haven't a uh, quote unquote in, but once we got in, they love the Wilkes interns. So those are very popular legal related interns. Now, let's say you don't wanna do a law related internship, what can you do? In terms of like American government type of interns, Northeastern Pennsylvania, when it comes to elections is a very uh, popular area because it's, it's kind of, um, um, you know, there, there are Republicans here, there are Democrats, it's, it's kind of up for grabs. So Senate, House of Representatives, presidential elections, those campaigns, of, of course, before COVID came to Wilkes-Barre set up, there's a lot of internships there. Students do internships with campaigns. They also do some interns with internships with elected officials. That's the American government related internships. In terms of international relations or comparative politics, because of that United Nations relationship that we have, they, there are United Nations internships that students have done uh, each summer. So we had a student intern with Rwanda, the Rwanda delegation. We had a student intern with the, I think it was the Jamaican delegation. Um, so that relationship that we have with the United Nations allows students who are interested in more international relations type of work to intern with the UN. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Sure. Yeah, that was a, that was a very good question um, that I, I didn't specifically discuss. Um, so I'm glad you asked. Other questions, you, you could be a question about Wilkes. It could be a question about political science, but you know, if you wanna ask about parking or something, I could, I could maybe help or whatever, student life. I do have another question. Um, I've seen on the course selection site um, that there's like an alternative spring break to Costa Rica and you do different projects. Do you know anything else about that? Yes. Yeah. So that's another great question, Morgan. Um, so there's no spring break. Uh, we, 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 we adjusted the, the calendar because of COVID in the spring. There's no spring break. But every other year, there's a spring break, right? And so I, I always think it's the best week of the year. But there's a spring break the first week of March. Now, what the alternative spring break is, is this. Students who sign up for it um, spend a week in one of four or five locations, okay? So we've had trips to Florida. We've had trips to, you know, New Orleans after uh, Hurricane Katrina. We, you know, we had a, one trip go to Kentucky after a tornado. Um, one of the popular alternative spring break trips is to Costa Rica. Now, Dr. Miller, the political science professor, is the one that takes the students every year on that alternative spring break to Costa Rica. Now, what do they do in Costa Rica? They do a lot. Um, uh, a lot of community service projects. He works with a, a woman down there and sets up community service projects, you know, to help, you know, build something or, or to help with a water filtration system, whatever it might be. So, the, the Costa Rica, sometimes he takes them to the Dominican Republic, but that's it, that every March, Dr. Miller does an alternative spring break trip. So it's alternative because, you know, you're, you're doing something uh, positive, doing something good during that week. And it's, um, you know, very refreshing and fulfilling. Now, let me also say this, um, Dr. Miller is a Costa Rica expert. Right. Remember, I said he's Latin American. He teaches two classes. One is on uh, ecotourism in Costa Rica. The other is is on um, 
coffee and, and other sort of uh, goods from Costa Rica and sort of the international economy. As part of that class, what he does is that class goes to Costa Rica and they actually pick coffee beans or they do ecotourism research. So that class, of course, because there's a, a trip component to it, is a very, very popular class. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent question, Morgan. Thank you for asking it. Other questions? I do have another. Um, what kind of miners would you recommend? That's another great question. So by the way, Morgan, you know, you've asked three. Trust me, other people in the room, they have the same questions. So keep them coming. Um, I guess the answer is, it, it all depends, okay? So I can tell you what most of the political science majors do. So I would say that for most of political science majors, they will minor in international relations, what used to be international studies, or they would minor in criminology or minor in sociology, sometimes, sometimes psychology. Those seem to be the, the most popular minors. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, the way that our curriculum is structured, what is actually probably more popular than a minor is a double major, all right? And so I won't get, get into all of the intricacies of this, but it's very easy, relatively easy, I should say, at Wilkes to double major, especially if you're a political science major. So we have a lot of students who double, probably the most popular one is a double major in political science and criminology. We've also had students double major in political science and psychology or political science and sociology. So it's, you know, it's very easy to double major at Wilkes, at least for the political science major. So, and I say criminology, and I'm assuming that the reason that criminology is the most popular one is because it's also you know, kind of related to law and law school, a lot, a lot of the criminology type of stuff. So that seems to be a very popular double major or major and minor uh, for the students who wanna go into law school. But yeah, that's a, that's a great question. We've also had some, not, not many, but some students will minor in communication studies. Um, it becomes a little more difficult to double major in like, like business in political science or biology in political science, like that, that, that's very difficult because of their course requirements. Uh, it would, you could minor in, in business or marketing or something in political science, but it's more difficult to double major in those. Does that answer your question, Morgan? Is that? Yes, thank you. And it took into my next question too, which was double majors. Yeah. So yeah, and um, you know, it, it, it's it's something that you should think about. Um, there there's there are different arguments about like the value of double majors or the value of minors. You know, it's um, the advantages of it. It signals to employers or it signals to grad schools or law schools that you're a serious student. Um, you know, I, so the other thing I would say is maybe more than a double major, internships are really, really important, very important. So, you know, if, if it comes down to this, I don't think it would, but if it comes down to internship or double major, um, I would have probably sided with internship because those internships are really valuable because you get to see, all right, this person is doing X, whatever X is, right? A, a public defense lawyer or judge, whatever. And you, you get to see like, oh, I, I really, really like this or this is not what I thought it was. And the other sort of advantage is it, it allows for networking opportunities. Um, 
So internships, I think, are extremely valuable and are becoming increasingly, uh, increasingly important too. Yep. Any other questions? Anything at all I can help you with? Let me, as you're maybe thinking about a question, let me, let me just ask you one. How many of you are in person, like your high school is in person? We're hopefully going back hybrid next week. Okay. But you've been, how long have you been remote? Uh, since we got back from Thanksgiving. Okay. How about everyone else? Are you remote or are you in person or hybrid or something? I'm hybrid too. Okay. I'm also hybrid. Are they, what's Binghamton doing? Are they thinking they're going to be back full time or, or no? Um, not, well, I haven't heard anything about that. So I assume no. Okay. But yeah, as of now, we're just going every other day. Okay. So, I mean, one of the reasons I asked that is I, you know, I, one, one reason is I'm just curious, but uh, the second reason is I, I think, um, you know, so I, I'm on a group uh, called the academic recovery team where we kind of look at these issues and, and figure out what we're going to do as a university. Um, with the vaccine coming out and, and things looking better in 2021, um, I, you know, it looks like the fall of 21 will be I, mean, I don't know what normal looks like, but it'll be closer to normal than certainly uh, 2020, 2021 this year. So that's something to, to be hopeful about. Anything else I can help you with? So for those who maybe popped in a little later, I did in the chat, I put in a Google form. Um, if, if you could fill that out and then, you know, that'll just get, get sent to me. I can, um, you know, find out a little bit more about you and get your information. All right, Any, anything else I can help you with tonight? All right, so um, I hope to hear from you, I'll, I'll send you an email here, hopefully in the next couple of days to, to touch base and, and to see how you're doing. Um, if you have any questions at all, again, after we leave here, feel free to shoot me an email. We can set up a Zoom, we can set up a phone call and I can help you with, with, with whatever's on your mind. If you'd rather talk to a student, uh, I, I could uh, make that happen as well. So, all right, are we good? Yes, thank you. All right, sure. Have a good night, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Have you a good care. night.